just maybe start with the injury update if there is any on, on, on Zach McEwen. Yeah, uh, we're waiting on him. He could play. Um, you know, uh, obviously an exhibition when you get hurt, you don't really take. Uh, you're not going to put a guy in risk. <clears throat> he was unable to come back, so we're not sure on him yet. Uh, we'll probably know more by tomorrow. Uh, Josh Norris, day to day at this point. I wait every day, um, you know, on the word from uh, from the trainers if if he's able to go. Obviously, he's practicing full speed, looks good out there. But uh, so at this point, I'd say he's day to day. And, and day to day seems pretty optimistic. I would yeah, say. I'd say more optimistic than a, than a day ago. Um, you know, but it's been a bit of a roller coaster when it comes to you know this and. And I know the kid wants to play, and uh, you know, and everyone wants him out there. So at this point, I'd say he's day to day. Roster cut, cut down deadline tomorrow. When do you expect to make your final decisions? Um, I'll, I'll talk to Pierre here shortly, um, and those decisions will probably be made today. Got a sense that there was an extra step on the ice here today, based on preseason coming. Yeah, up. I think it's it's good to to, to that's over. Um, you know. I, I think our guys have worked extremely hard, our, our veteran players and our young players coming back. I think guys fighting for jobs. Right on through, I've been happy with the effort. It, the practice has been good. They've been sharp. Um, you know, we're ready to go. You're giving uh, Yuri a look on that second power play unit. What does that indicate about what you've seen about him? Well, I've seen him at the World Championships. <clears throat> He's a goal line guy. Obviously, with Pence not here, that, that spot opens up a bit. Pence can play the bumper or the goal line. Uh, and he's got the ability to take pucks to the net. He can make plays down there. He's a big guy, um, you know. So, uh, you know, you know, today's just practice. I mean, we're we're trying different things. Um, obviously, there's, uh, you know, there's the game group, and we'll see who's healthy. So, with, with Pinto not here and Norris out, have you given any thought of maybe putting Gio there at one point? He played center pretty well in this league in the past. Yeah, he hasn't played center in a long time. Um, he could do it for a game or two. I don't think his interest is to do that. And, um, you know, I think we've got guys. I mean, uh, you know, you've got Ridley. You've got Robbie Yervente. You, you've got Charche. I think we've got some centers. I think G's done a real nice job where he is on the wing. If I need him, certainly he could do it. But um, at this point, we're going to keep him on the wing. Talking about uh, Sharkey, uh, getting a chance between uh, Tarasenko and Kubelik uh, just uh, – your thoughts about his camp? Well, he's had a, a phenomenal camp. I, I think he's, you know, his skating, his checking, obviously with those two centers not here, um, you know, he got a real extra long look. Um, he's played really well. He's very responsible. You know, you're going into Carolina, who's, I think they're, you know, I think people have them as the uh, powerhouse in the Eastern Conference. They're, you know, as good as anyone, especially in their building. Um, you know, it's going to be a tight game, and you need guys with, uh, you know, that play with a lot of structure and detail. And, and I think Sharks is one of those guys. We've had a lot of um, emphasis on your centers, but could you maybe take us through your wingers and how you decided to? Uh, <laughs> still pretty decent, so. mm -hmm. um, But like, <clears throat> obviously, you keep Kachuk and Giroud together. But maybe take us through uh, Joseph and Batherson and, and Kubelik and Well, you're going on the road, so you don't get last change. Um, and it changes without Norris, and it changes without Pinto. That changes all the lines. Um, I think Kubi has been really good in camp. He continues to score. Him and Vladdy can score. I think Drake can score, and I, and I think arguably the guy who's maybe had the best camp of anyone is Joseph. So, um, you know, I, I think you've got a couple even lines there. I think we've evened out um, the offense. Um, you know, that's a... You know, that, that'll change as we get Josh back and as eventually Pince unfolds, uh, you know, that'll sort itself out. But I think Drake's been as good as anyone, and so is Joe. Did you, you talked about how the player has evolved and you mentally need to take care of him. When you talk to Josh, just psychologically, you know, he said he was frustrated, but how is he doing that? He's frustrated. Um, I think he's, he's, you know, certainly he's got a lot of guys on his side. The players love him. We love him. Um, you know, but he's frustrated. I, you know, you know, this summer he thought he would play in exhibition games, and away he goes, and and that hasn't happened. Um, you know, so you got to remember, this is a guy that's all he's ever done for his whole life is play hockey, and that's all he wants to do, and and he's unable to do it at this point. So it's not easy for anyone, um, and, and certainly mentally, that's a you know a challenge, and you know we got to continue to talk to him and work with him every day. Was it communicate with him? I mean, do you 
type of topic that has nothing to do with the injury going on, or how do you kind of try to keep them from a coach's perspective? You know what? They're pretty smart. <laughs> you know, I, I talk to my guys about all kinds of things, you know, on a day to day basis. When I talk to Josh, it's essentially, you know, just let him know that I'm wearing the side and, uh, um, you know, let me know when you're ready. And, you know, the, he wants to be out there. Is the LTIR a possibility or is he, do you think he'll be back soon? That would be a question for Pierre, but I, at this point, uh, we got him at day to day. So, you know, every day when I show up, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful um, that he has an ability to play. Um, so at this point, I'd say no on that. How much has just the situation with Joss, Pinto not being here, made things a little more challenging for you and your staff with just figuring out the lines? Because as you said, back in June and July, this was not what you anticipated. <clears throat> no, absolutely not. It, it certainly made it uh, more difficult, but. Um, you know, I, I think you got to look at the positive. Ridley Gregg, uh, Joe's come back a different player. Um, you know, and we know we're going to get these guys at some point. So, um, you know, we, we've done, we've dealt with this before. Uh, <laughs> I did not think it would be before the year started. That's for sure. Um, but there's no excuses, and, and we got enough talent in that room to win. Well, when you. Th- I, th- I think when you, you know, have a bad day or you have a bad game or whatever the case may be, a guy like Jonesy who easily could just stay at home, you know, he's chose to be around here for a bit. He, you know, he, I don't know how much he'll be around, but he, he's around here um, going through what he's going through. Certainly puts life into perspective. Um, we're all very lucky to be where we are. Uh, we're all very lucky to, uh, to have our health, and that's the number one thing. And without health, you have nothing. And... Uh, you know, for me and for the players, I'm sure it puts everything into perspective. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. You've got to celebrate it now that you're in Canada. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get, to, get two. What's better than that? Hey, just a thought on, on maybe the, the mood and the, and the pace and the tempo of that, that practice, because it kind of felt like that's the first real practice with the with the Boys are flying. It just shows how hard we've worked in the summer and in camp, and it feels like we're ready to go here. So for it to finally be you know, a couple of days away, it's um, yeah, definitely you know fired up to get the season going. You've uh, you've been so close with Josh uh, mm-hmm. over the years. How difficult has this stretch been for him? Uh, just personally wanting to get out there and, and not being able to. to get out there for him, it's just he wants to play so bad and and um, just wants to be with the group in the everyday grind and and. Um, yeah, he's just doing whatever it takes just to, you know, continue to prepare for when he is, you know, good to go that he'll be um, he'll be good to go. But, yeah, just I, I want to be there as a friend right now and just um, kind of be a sounding board, just being there for him if, you know, ever wants to talk about something. So um, he looks good. And, and, yeah, no, we're, we're definitely counting the days till he comes in. And, and I know he's, uh, he's doing it the most. So he's uh, going to be looking forward to getting in uh, hopefully soon. Seems like he's got good energy anytime he's on the ice. It's definitely, um, I mean, it shows his personality out there. He's always a guy who's positive, happy, a great teammate, and, and it's shown he's, he's really working. So um, shows that to everybody else that he wants to be in as much as anybody. And, and uh, um, when his name's going to be called, he's, you know, even though he didn't get any preseason action, he looks like he's in awesome shape. So, of course, games are different, but knowing him as a player and as a person, he'll be ready to go. Yeah, I mean, that's a tough one. Um, to be honest with you, I, with him, I don't really think there's, you know, you know a captain or, or it's just I've, you know, been, he's been one of my best friends and I've been one of his best friends for, you know, close to 10 years now. So uh, I know uh, we know each other best and, and it's just all about you know, being there for each other. And, uh, um, and yeah, I mean, I think this is a difficult time where there could be some, you know, negativity around him, but I think people forget, you know, just – how good of a player he is and just his work ethic I mean you guys see it you know, every day when you guys are here but not the everyday person here in Ottawa sees just what he's putting into it just to get back and um, I think if people were able to see just a day in day out of, of his grind and, and just it just shows his commitment to this team to the city that he wants to provide every success to you know the people coming to watch us at this point last question for me uh, at this point is it just, have you had enough of 
camp and preseason and all that? Or are you just itching to get out and play some meaningful hockey games? Oh, I'm done with camp. Yeah, it was good. It was it was good. It was fun, but I'm absolutely done with it. So um, now it's ready for the the big games here. It's um, what do you uh, you know your your aspirations and goals are for the season are coming up here starting on Wednesday. So um, yeah, I know everybody in that locker room is ready to go. It's um, we've had fun, but we're all all you know goals aligned right now. So we just want to get going. Is there an anxiety that goes with that excitement too? That Maybe nervous isn't the word to describe it, but just a little bit nervous. Yeah, there's a, well, of course, going into every year, you have that nervous energy, you got the excitement, nerves, you know, you name it. It's um, it's a fresh season, and, and, you know, it's all that work you put in the summer. That's what you trust is, is the work, um, you know, the hard workouts or the middle of the summer grind and, and camp grind. It's It all prepares you for the moment starting on Wednesday. So, um, yeah, I think... Somebody would be lying to, to tell you that they weren't nervous going into the season, just um, you know, first year with you know expectations, pressure. But I think uh, you know, having pressure is an opportunity to you know do something special. So um, yeah, no, it's I think uh, it's an opportunity for all that hard work to you know get rewarded. You said coming in like things feel a little bit different. So, like, what have you seen over camp to kind of confirm that that feeling? Yeah, I mean, I just think. The, um, the tightness. I think it's the the communication that guys have had with one another. That um, of course you have guys here for a long time, but guys who have kind of new to the roster have implemented themselves you know perfectly. We have you know a great room, great guys, and and uh, yeah, all of our goals are aligned right now. So um, it's just going to be exciting to that fresh season, fresh season, and uh, just getting ready to go. I think that's what it you know, makes everybody excited. Is, uh, to be able to have the opportunity to play in front of this great city, great fan base, and, and feel their support. So I um, can't wait for that to get going on Wednesday and then Saturday for the home opener. I can't help but notice your hat, Ottawa Fire Services. Why are you wearing that today? Yeah, well, we have um, you know, a couple firefighters out here today, but don't want to spoil it uh, no, too much. But um, no, gift us something special that we'll probably reveal in the next couple of days. There's a different maybe feel or a level of intensity in a, in a practice like that when you know that this is uh, kind of awfully close to the, uh, the game group? Yeah, I mean, we're getting close here to the season, and, uh, you know, obviously the intensity will go a little bit higher, and guys are kind of getting more prepared to uh, to the speed that, uh, that's going to happen. When you look at your forward group right now, I know you potentially might be missing Josh and you might be missing Pinto, but how do you do maybe your, your top nine as it's currently constructed? Yeah, I mean, anytime you got guys that are not playing, it's uh, a great opportunity for somebody to step up. And, uh, you know, uh, with the lineup we, we have right now, we, uh, we feel confident that uh, we can get off to, uh, to a good start. So, um, you know, which, whichever guys are, are put in or out, uh, at the end of the day, you just got to worry about yourself. How are you trying to support Josh Norris with whatever he's going through right now? Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, uh, he's a competitor. He wants to be out there. And... Uh, you know he's been he's he's been through a lot, so I uh, just try to support him and kind of listen to him, and uh, we're we're definitely very excited to uh, to to have him back when whenever that case is. Is it sometimes a distraction when you know he's there but he can't fit into the lineup, and, and you know you're trying to get chemistry with who's going to have to step onto the ice on Wednesday? Well, I don't think it's a distraction. I think it's uh, like I said, it's a it's a it's an opportunity for for a young player to come in and. And show what they can do, and uh, so. But like I said, we uh, we're excited to have uh, Josh back when he uh, when he's ready, and and uh, you know, to uh, till he comes back, we uh, we just got to play a little bit better. The dynamic changes a bit Wednesday. Regular season begins. Can it come soon enough? You guys just excited about? playing a game that, that means something in the standings? Yeah, I mean, you know, the whole summer you're, you're excited to get the camp going and, and be with the guys again. And, and when you're, you're playing the preseason games and you're during camp, you just want to get the regular season going. So, uh, you know, we had, a, we had a good camp. We feel like we're, uh, uh, we're ready to go. And uh, we worked on a lot of things. So, uh, you know, you can just feel it in the, in the locker room. Guys are ready to get going here. Uh, no, not at all. Not well, not for me, anyways. Uh, 
you know, you, it's it's good for the confidence and uh, but preseason is about feeling the ice, feeling the, the puck, and working on system and uh, doing all that stuff. It's uh, um, obviously uh, uh, it looks good, but I mean it doesn't matter. Peut-être en français, Claude, deuxième camp d'entraînement. Comment tu peux comparer cette édition-ci par rapport à celle que tu as vue l'an passé? Tu trouves que c'est une équipe peut-être plus affamée, plus mature? Oui, je pense que c'est euh, fair à dire qu'on est une, une équipe un petit peu plus mature. Puis euh, pendant le camp, l'intensité était là. Les gars, ils ont, ils ont arrivé en shape. So, euh, euh, ça nous donne la, la confiance de pouvoir commencer en, euh, la saison. Yeah, just say we're, we're kind of, I know that there's still a few days to go until uh, opening day, but for you to be sitting here and, and practicing on the third line must feel really good for you uh, here today. Yeah, I think just still taking it day by day, and I think that's what you got to take the approach, even the full season. So, no, obviously I don't take anything for granted, and uh, you know I'm happy to be here, but I know there's still still work to be done. What's it like when you uh, you run practice drills on one side and you see Dominic Kubalik, and on the other side you see Vlad Tarasenko? Like that's those are some legitimate elite uh, wingers in national hockey. Yeah, exactly. They they both had a lot of success over the years. So obviously myself. Uh, I'm more trying to prove myself, so you know they're both special players. I'm just going to try to fit in with them and you know play my game and uh, uh, not try to overthink anything. Is it in those yeah, I think I just uh, like my I guess attention to detail. You know, executing the systems, and uh, I think I always try to bring my bring a strong work ethic and you know knock it out worked. And uh, mistakes are going to happen, but just try not to make them. You know, twice out there and. I do believe I got a bit of an offensive side of my game too that will eventually come out, but uh, obviously just, you know, getting up to speed and uh, getting confidence going. With what happened in the past with your concussion, does it make you savor the moment even more when you line up with the Kuba League and Tarasenko like that? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I sat out two full years. I don't know if many people know that. and. Uh, I mean, I was basically retired, right? So to be essentially on a team for an opening roster again, it means a lot for me. And like I said, it's something I don't take for granted. And, uh, you know, opportunities maybe have been few and far between in my career just because of, you know, my inability to stay healthy. So just try to make the most of every single one I get. How hard was those moments yeah. when you had the concussion and not knowing the future and sitting out, missing action? And I guess you doubted, you had your doubts about the future back then. Yeah, you know, I, like it's it's just funny. It's the same approach as now, right? Day by day, and uh, I always had the hopes I was going to come back, and you know, stuck by that. And I was, I tried to stay as ready as I could. But I mean, over the course of two years not playing, if I if I could have told you, it would have would have made it been playing again, let alone back in you know the top league. Uh, I wasn't so sure. So, no, like I said, I t I don't take anything for granted, and it's 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 special to me. What were some of the symptoms of the concussion? Like, was it bright lights? And what was, what was what were you feeling? Yeah, I dealt with some headaches and stuff, and uh, like I said it just it took a while to resolve. And maybe that was a matter of you know trying to push through stuff early in my career that you know I was never really kind of getting back to normal. So I just had to take my time there and, and get things right before before I could come back and play. And you had said to yourself, oh, "This is it. I've had enough. I'm gonna." Pack it in, and what changed your mind? Uh, not so much that I never really, I never really thought I was done, and uh, I think that's what helped me. And I had good, you know, support from family and friends, and um, I don't think there was ever a moment I was really, you know, this is this is it. But like I said, if I told you over two years that there wasn't some some bad thoughts in my mind, I'd be lying. Um, for me, I, I was pretty lucky. Uh, I pretty well skated with the Saskatoon Blades the entire time I was out. So I was practicing essentially as a non-contact player in junior. And yeah, that's a different level than, you know, even being in the AHL or NHL. So, but no, I, like I said, had a lot of good support around me and friends. And I just tried to stay ready. I think it helped that I, I'd played in the NHL before I got hurt. And uh, it was just such a small taste that, you know, it, it leaves you one more. So. It's like you're, you're one of the ultimate underdog stories, the guy that you had it and it went away and you fought and you clawed and you, and you got back. 
got back to this level? Like, what what's that journey been like for you? Yeah, I think um, maybe earlier in my career, you you know, you can have the good and bad days. And for me, knowing where I've been, uh, I don't have a whole lot of maybe maybe the ups and downs anymore, right? Like, I, I sometimes just have to look at the big picture and be like. You know, a few years ago, I was I was in my parents' basement, essentially not doing anything. So even on the worst days, whether it be in the AHL, NHL, um, you know, you just move forward. And I think the positive side, and like I said, just trying to make the most of everything. Were the parents giving you a little nudge while you were in the basement, telling you, you got to try and make this work? No, they they were really good the whole time, supportive. And like I said, it's I wouldn't wish kind of what I went through on anybody. And uh, they were always good to me, you know, they, they weren't too involved, like, you know, they weren't on me every day. I think they knew I had somewhat of a plan to, to get myself back. And like I said, they kind of let me, let me take care of myself. Mom and dad's names? Uh, Mark and Yvette. Mark with a K? Uh, Mark with a C. And Yvette, Y-B? E-T-T-E, yeah. Are they, they got to be pretty excited about where you are now. Yeah, I think, I think they're happy for me. Like, I think the whole time you know whatever whatever I wanted to do and whatever happened I think they were they were fully supportive of me so I think uh, obviously this is my dream to play in the NHL and um, I think you know, like I said they couldn't be happier right now for sure. With the journey you went through does it just make you appreciate maybe some of the, the off ice stuff just as much because it seems a lot of guys when they can't play anymore it's the camaraderie the locker room and so do you do you maybe take everything in a bit more than you did before? Yeah, I think, yeah, there's nothing really I take for granted. Like, I, I essentially got a taste of what it feels like maybe to be all over and, um, you know, to get a second chance, not everyone gets that. So, no, I, uh, like I said, I have a lot of good days, or like I said, even the bad days don't seem so bad.